If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com And welcome to TruthRadioShow.com and welcome to this in-depth comprehensive study of the Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. It's the final chapter before the book of Galatians. I'm very excited because I can't wait to jump into the book of Galatians. So much teachings about with this, just as well as this as well. So, um, like always, guys, we've got an uh, awesome Bible study approach here. Uh, let's pray for wisdom and understanding. So, guys, if you missed chapters 1 through 13, I would just say stop right there. Stop where you are and go back and read um, the you know, first 12 chapters or go watch the videos, whatever the case. So um, let's pray for wisdom and understanding. So Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, we come before you in, um, to this last chapter of the book of 2 Corinthians 13 uh, by Paul. And we pray for forgiveness of the sins that we may have committed individually that we committed today. And we love you so much. And Heavenly Father, uh, we ask you once again, uh, for the divine, not to be repetitive, but uh, for the divine Holy Spirit to write your word upon our hearts today. In this case, the book of Second Corinthians chapter 13. And we are all really excited to get into the book of Galatians. And uh, thank you for giving me the wisdom and encouragement and um, just give me the ability to do this for you. And I pray that we just could continue throughout the rest of the uh, Revelation and get into the Old Testament as well. So we, I ask you for uh, knowledge and wisdom, and we love you so much, Heavenly Father. And please bless everybody here, and protect us all from the forces of evil. And we love you with all our hearts and souls. Amen. And we read the scripture in context, because context is key. That's very important. Let the scripture interpret scripture. As we explain all this in the last chapter, I don't want, you know, I mean, I, I like to explain it in every chapter, but um, you, know, you guys get the point by now. If you haven't got the point by now, um, I don't know what to tell you. So let's get into the Bible, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, once again, the final chapter of this book. Then we are on to the book of Galatians, another book by Paul. So anyway, let's get going. So if you've got a Bible, open it up, and I know ShakeyWakeRadio.com, you got the audio edition. So I encourage you guys to stop where you are, ShakeyWakeRadio.com. And just open the Bible for yourselves, because um, the thing is, I know you you guys trust me from reading from this, but I don't like to be trusted like that. I want um, you guys to read it for yourselves. This way, if I make an error, I want you guys to point that out. That's why I do this for. That's why we have that graph up there that says to read it for yourselves. And the Bible says to challenge every spirit. If I make a mistake, I goof up. I want you guys to point it out, and I know listeners have done that, and I, I, I appreciate that. And you're not going to offend me. If I say something wrong, you're like, oh, well, you botched that verse up. That's not what it means. A absolutely. You call me out on it. Say, hey, Dan, you messed up on us. Um, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I look at him like, yeah, all right. I have no problem humbling myself and correcting myself. Especially with the Bible. I am not going to at all show any ounce of pride with the scriptures. That's not what it's about. We're supposed to speak in the word of the Lord and be held accountable also. So if I messed up, guys, I always encourage people to let me know, please. You're not going to offend me. You're not going to get me mad or upset. Let me know I messed up. Because I don't want to mislead people. That's my, uh, this what took me many years to start doing this stuff. I always wanted to do it, but it took me so long because I didn't want to mess up. I didn't want to mislead people. And I pray that you guys can hold me accountable, hold my feet to the fire if I mess up. Please do that. And actually, I'll love you even more if you did that. So don't, again, don't be afraid of uh, offending me. And that's not about pride and ego here. So I know a lot of talk show hosts, they got pride and egos and all that stuff, but I'm not about that. So let's get into the word, guys. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13, final chapter here of the book. So verse 1, it says, This is the third time I am coming to you. So Paul, to the church of Corinth, this is the third time I'm coming to you guys. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. The established is to be uh, completed, right? It's established. Doesn't mean abolish, no. People always misinterpret that when it says uh, complete. No, that means it doesn't mean to end. 
it means to establish, right? When the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everywhere be established. So when two or three witnesses come to you for one the cause, right? In other words, if you've seen a car accident, right? How it happened, right? Just say, say the other driver, um, two people, one, uh, just say a male, right? Drove through a stop sign and hit an innocent person, right? Now the person could lie and say, hey, uh, yeah, no, they didn't stop at their stop sign. You know, but if witnesses in the area have all seen you just fly through the stop sign, and the other person stopped, and you hit them. And then after two or three witnesses, yeah, uh, the cops are automatically going to take that person's side. The innocent one, you know what I mean? Unless he's got a bunch of friends that lie, too. It's the other case. But, yeah. But, um, anyway, this I'm just trying to use that for example, right? So this is the third time I'm coming to you, Paul saying to the church of Corinth, and the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before, and I foretell you. In other words, I'm, I told you before, and I'm telling you now. And I'm going to tell you again. As if I were present the second time. And being absent now, I am right to them. So this is, Paul's not actually there. He's right to them. I just want to make that clear because I don't know if I made that clear in uh, the prior chapters here. Because it, it sounded like um, I did, I, gee, I caught myself, I think I said, Paul going to church to church and him going to the church here. So he's not actually here. He's writing them a letter. So I just want to clarify that for you. So, uh, like, like I said, uh, I told you before, and I foretell you. Like I'm foretelling you, and that means I'm telling you again because of a future encounter, right? As if I were present. The second time, and me being absent now, I write to them, which herefore have sinned. Remember the last chapter we talked about, if you recall? He was talking about sexual uh, sins going on there. About sin, people sin already and they didn't repent of uncleansedness, fornication, lavishness. In other words, showing signs and, uh, like we point here, right? Filled or showing sexual desire. Which they have committed, right? So this is Paul continuing on and finishing this letter. Again, I told you before, and I tell, I'm going to tell you again. That's what he's saying. That's what foretell means. I told you before, and I will tell you again, as if I were present among you the second time. But being absent now, I write to them which herefore have sinned, and to all others, that if I come here again, okay, I will not spare so this is Paul's like setting things straight. He's like really livid, right? Because there's stuff going on in the church. Yeah. He wrote them this letter, right, to say, listen, knock the stuff off. He goes, if I have to come here again, <laughs> he's like, he's like, remember the last chapter we talked about, uh, you know, like the parent thing? Right? Like we're right here talking about the parents, right? Like a parent with a child, right? This is Paul again. Whoops, hold on a second, where am I? All right, yeah. <laughs> this is Paul again. Like, it's like your mom telling you, or your father when you're a kid. If I have to come in this bedroom again, and you guys are yelling or screaming, like, uh, you know, it's time to go to bed, get in the bed. But if I have to come in here again, there's got to be problems, right? That's the same thing your parents telling you, right? So Paul's saying, hey, people here have sinned. They have not uh, repented. Just because I'm not here, okay? He's saying this, right? And I told you before, and I'm going to tell you again, as if I were present, if I was here. Act like I was here. The second time, and being absent now, I write to them, which herefore have sinned, and to all the other, that if I come here again, okay, I will not spear. Since you seek to proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you would word, you word is not weak, but is mighty in you. So he's saying, since you people seek proof that Christ speaks through me, which to you, you word, is not weak, but mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, and again, I want to point out, he's not saying Jesus is weak in that, t in that sense. His weakness is like basically, 
uh, let himself be crucified. Showing weakness to show humbleness. So don't take that out of context, right? For through, he was crucified, talk about Jesus, was crucified through weakness. Yet he lived by the power of God. For we all, so, for we also are weak in him. And again, it's not saying like weak in that tense, right? But weak in the humbleness and all that, right? But we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. So I forget what he's saying here, right? And again, if uh, like I say all the time, if you don't get this, guys, um, you know, pause the video, go in the comment section. And, yeah, I know if you're during the premiere, you can't do that right away. But when the video is over, go into the comment section. Hey, uh, verse 4, could you explain that better? Or whatever the case, you know what I mean? So always do that, guys. So he's telling them, examine yourselves. Look at yourselves, right? Validate yourselves. Whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. He said, prove it to your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? He said, do you, not, do you guys not know your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you? Except you be reprobates? The reprobate which is rejected or the count of unworthiness, right? So, except for you be rejects, rejected, I mean, or not worthy. So you're saying, examine yourselves, because you're asking me, you know, uh, since you seek proof of Christ in me, right? Then you're saying, oh, yeah, examine yourselves and ask yourselves about your own faith and prove your own selves. And don't you people know your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you? Don't you guys know that, he's saying? Except you be reprobates? You know, you know, it's like, uh, do you guys feel rejected or worthless? But I trust that you shall know that we are not reprobates. We are not rejects. We are not worthless, guys. That's what he's saying. Because when you sin, right, you feel worthless. You don't. You feel rejected. Because uh, and you're even ashamed to talk to God. I know when I commit sins, right? I'm ashamed to even talk to God. But I have to because I could get for forgiveness. Then you're like, all right. Then you learn you shouldn't be ashamed to talk to God. You know what I mean? God wants you to talk to him. Because you just committed whatever sin you did and you feel ashamed to talk to him about it. Because you're real ashamed that you did it. That's the Holy Spirit in you. You know, like, he, not to sound new agey. You know, I'm just saying like the, your consciousness the new, um, you know, that, that knocks at your door and says, hey, you're doing something wrong. That's the Holy Spirit. And again, I'm not, you know, using New Age terminology. <laughs> that New Age garbage, but yeah. But I trust that you will know that we are not reprobates. And he said, he said, I trust you guys that you're not going to know that we're not rejects, we're not insufficient. We're not worthless. Now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that we should do that which is honest. Do we, as we, as ro uh, reprobates, right? As a worthless and whatever, you know, that's the best way to say it. Rejected, worthless, right? Don't we be re reprobates, right? So again, he's not contradicting himself because he told him, yeah, don't be re reprobates, right? Right there, we are not reprobates, and he says, though we are reprobates. See, uh, Bible scoffers we call, scoffers, not scholars, scoffers will twist this, and then he's not saying, or, you know, he's not contradicting himself. He knows, you know, the thing is, he knows we're not worthy of the salvation, right? We all should know that. We're not worthy of it. We shall automatically be rejected for our sin nature. But, but, because we are God's children, right? Adopted children of the Lord, right? We're not no longer worthless. We're not no longer rejected by God. And when he says, though we be as reprobates, in other words, we feel that way. Not that we are, but we feel that way. Right? Don't. 
For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. That's a, that's a powerful statement, too. You've got to write that down. I like that. That's cool. Because um, this goes a long way. Uh, like, nobody can debunk the truth. Took a screenshot of that. Nobody can debunk the truth. Nobody can touch the truth. But we could do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. We could do for the truth. We helped, you know, spread the word, the truth. That's why these people out there, these scoffers and all that, they can't destroy the word of God. Much as they try, like Stephen Hawkins and all these idiots, these fools, I should say, much as they try because they, uh, they have seminars against weak-minded people that don't know the Bible. That's why they can draw crowds and all that stuff because it's soothsaying, you know? Uh, but yeah, when you test these people, they, you know, they don't like people like us that know the scripture. Because the scripture is written upon our hearts. Again, for we could do nothing against the truth but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak. And ye are strong. So you, l let me give a clarification on that in case you didn't get it at the last chapter. What does that mean, we are glad when we are weak, and, but yet we are strong? Because when you're down and out, you're at your best. How, and how does that make any sense? Check this out. When you're going through te test trials and tribulation, right? You lost everything, whatever the case, right? And you're at your weak point, right? But you're at your best as well. Because now you're more in tune to God. You're more in tune to what you have to do to get back. What you have to go through. You understand the path in front of you. And at this point with the Lord, you're flawless to come back to, um, you know, get your job back or, you know, work, or get your family back, stuff like that, right? Whatever the trial it is. Like Michael Jordan said that, too. When, uh, a lot of times when the Chicago Bulls, uh, they were, uh, like, down, like, going into the second half of the game, like, down 20-something points. Normally, a team would just lose. 20, 30 points, right? And uh, Jordan said, you know, when we're down, we're at our best because now we've learned to focus now. We've learned to, um, you know, like, really... Fine tune our game. That's what this means spiritually. When we're down, is that when we're at our best? When we're being persecuted, we're at our best. Our weakness is our strength. And Michael, not to use Michael Jordan again, but yeah, uh, Michael Jordan always said uh, when he his weaknesses he turned into strengths. You know, for a while he couldn't shoot three pointers. He worked hard and he became a great three point shooter. As a times when he couldn't shoot free throws. He sat there and shot 503 foes after practice and he became fluent with it. He turned his weaknesses into a strength. This is like summary of what I'm explaining here, right? And this, what well, we also wish, even your perfection. Because when you're down in uh, your, your weakness, right, and you, you get focused to be strong, right, you become, the perfection comes out, right? And therefore, I write these things being absent. Again, Paul's not here. He's just a letter yet. Lest being present, I should be you sharpness. According to the power which the Lord has given me to edification and not destruction. Like, in other words, not, I'm not going to hear, uh, come here, uh, like, uh, put you people down and destroy you. I mean, you get to bring edification and encouragement and stuff like that, right? But also, yeah, to let you know you need to repent. So you don't lead to destruction, right? So again, Paul's saying, like, I write these things to you because I'm not here. Unless being present, I should use sharpness. In other words, like, if he was present, yeah, remember? If I have to come back here again, he's saying, right? But using sharpness. In other words, I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm not going to be soft-spoken. I'm not going to be, uh, you know... Blowing smoke or anything like that, or tickling the ears. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be bold and upfront, and according to the power of the which the Lord has given me. So, if you notice that about Paul, uh, Paul when he spoke to people in person, he told you how it is. He didn't like beat around the bush, try to uh, sugarcoat things. He told you exactly how it is, and that's what you all need to learn, guys. Because our parents growing up, if they didn't tell us how it is, hey. 
God knows how he would have turned out, right? That's why he used um, the parent thing, uh, you know, example in the last chapter. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. What's that mean, be of one mind? In other words, the whole church, yeah, be united. Be of one mind of the scripture. Don't let there be division, right? Live in peace. Right? Again, be good comfort. Be of one mind, like by the scriptures, by the gospel. Like we're all today, we're all of one mind right now because we're reading the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13. We're all of one mind right now, right? We're in peace right now, right? Be, keep it that way. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. That's our Heavenly Father. Greet one another with the holy kiss. And a holy, a holy kiss is basically um, uh, it's a tradition. A holy kiss is basically it's a kiss on the cheek. Sometimes when you, you, know, you kiss uh, on both cheeks. And all saints salute you. And all the saints salute you, right? The saints are the believers. The saints are um, the people who also died in Christ too. You are the saints. We are all saints. You don't have to be uh, granted a saint by the Catholic Church or anything like that. No, that's not how it works. They don't have the power to grant anybody a saint. Or patron saints or any of that garbage. The saint is anybody. And that, that's the thing with the Catholic Church. So they make you feel inferior. Or you have to spend time in purgatory while saints go right to heaven. And you got to wait in purgatory, right? Which is unbiblical. It's not even biblical. And so you become a saint. And you have to sit in purgatory and all go through these rituals. No, that's not how it works. A saint is anyone who believes in Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost. Be with you all. That's beautiful. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. And this is the second epistle to the Corinthians. was written from Philipp Philippi, a city of Macedonia, by Titus and Lucas. So that concludes um, this book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And I can't wait to get to the book of Galatians. It's going to be awesome. Uh, there's a uh, man, a lot of good stuff in Galatians. Uh, I can't wait to get. And also, he has the other thing too. I can't wait to get to you more because there's a lot of misinterpretations by ministries and churches that they take verses out of context, and I can't wait to dig into those. Such as people saying, claiming the Ten Commandments were nailed to the cross, or the um, Paul says the Ten Commandments were nailed to the cross, or uh, the laws. No, he says the ordinances. Ordinances are not commandments, ordinances are not laws. And people don't understand there's a difference between ordinances, laws, commandments, and statutes. Four different things. And it's legal terminology, right? And most people don't understand legal terminology. So when a pastor, this dispensation pastor says, oh, they were nailed to the cross and blood out. No, they were not. The ordinances were, not the commandments. Or the law, excuse me. I can't wait to get into that. I think that's Galatians 5. But yeah, so many of those things there that these uh, false ministries and churches and religions out there misuse the book of Galatians for. And also has such great teachings, really is. And I can't wait, it's going to be exciting. So thank you for tuning in to uh, this uh, awesome chapter, man. It's good. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, so don't take my word, anybody else's word for it. Read it for yourselves, guys. Very important. And check out truthradioshow.com. It's a list to our shows and social media networks. So please check it out, guys. And uh, again, thank you for tuning in to this in-depth comprehensive study of the Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And we will see you, God willing, for Galatians chapter 1. Now I'm excited for that. So God bless, shalom, and you are the resistance.